Hi, hope you're doing well. My name is Aura and today I'm going to be speaking to you about moving to the UK. We're going to touch on topics before you coming to the UK and then after you get to the UK. Let's get started. So when it comes to moving to a new country, people move for different reasons. Some people it's to pursue further studies, to study at a prestigious university. For some it's access to courses that they may not have in their home country. For others it might be the excitement of you know trying something new. For yet some others it might be joining a spouse or a parent who already lives in the country um, they're looking to move to. Whatever your reason for moving, in terms of coming to the UK to live, there are a few options available. You could be coming to the UK as a student or as a worker. We're going to touch on each of these categories. Let's get started first with the student. As a university student, you could be coming to study an undergraduate degree, so doing your first degree, or you could be coming for a postgraduate degree, like a postgraduate diploma or a master's, or studying at PhD level, at doctorate level. If you're coming to UK as a student, there are a few things to bear in mind. First of all, if you're going to apply to come to the UK as an undergraduate student, you have to apply using a service called UCAS. UCAS is the Universities and Colleges Admission Service. When applying to universities uh, using UCAS, you can choose only five universities as your choices. This is for undergraduate level. So you go in, you do your research, find out about the university. Maybe you might like a particular university because it's close to a particular industry, or maybe um, you've got family here you want to be close to, or it could even be that you're aiming for, I don't know, uh, Oxford, Cambridge, Russell Group, that sort of thing. Or you're looking for a course that really suits your, really suits your needs or the vibe, vibe of the campus is quite nice. People have different reasons for choosing different universities. Whatever your reasons are, you do have five choices if you're studying non-medical degree, degrees. I do believe if you're studying medical degrees, you may only have four. That aside, once you've made your choice, you then send those off. The universities respond to you and tell you whether your application to them has been successful or unsuccessful. If you have offers, you can then choose from the offers you have. Or if you don't get any offers, you can go into what's called clearing. In clearing, you check the list of universities that still have spaces for different courses. And then if one of the courses matches what you're looking to study, you can contact them directly and say, oh, I didn't get into the universities I wanted to get into, but you have you seem to have spaces. Do you still have one more space for me? And if your grades match up with what they're looking for uh, and they agree, you can go study with them. Those are two ways of kind of getting your university offers. So let's say you've gotten past that. Now, with each university offer, you do have the academic offer as well as the uh, English level offer. So some universities may require you to have a certain level a certain level on the IELTS exam so maybe like a 5.5 or a 6.5 average on the IELTS exam some may accept maybe O level English as a replacement or something equivalent it really depends on the university it really it varies um, but then they also do have academic requirements so if you're applying before you've gotten your A level results or pre-university studies uh, results whether their foundation or otherwise you may then need to meet those uh, the grades for those before you can actually get on to a course so just bear that in mind but once you have your offer when you finally choose the two universities you're ready to apply to so one would be your main choice the choice you would go to and the other would be your insurance so say for example you didn't get the grades for the first choice you would then get your insurance choice once you decide which university you want to make your first choice the university would then send you a CAS letter, which is the Confirmation of Acceptance of Studies letter. With that letter, you can then go ahead to apply for a UK visa. Now, if, when applying to the UK, like I mentioned before about the English requirement, the UK also has some English requirements as well when applying to come study in the UK. Again, it might be an IELTS level. It might be that they take a certain um, test of English, another test of English. You just need to check what the um, offer says and what the uh, visa requirements are at the point when you're applying. So when you apply, provided that you do get the grades that the university requested for in your exams and you've passed your English language tests, you're, you're in basically and you can come study in the UK for as long as your visa would allow. Now your visa is usually the length of your studies. So if you were doing, for example, mechanical engineering at the University of Nottingham, and that's usually for three years, unless you're doing the MEng, which would then be four years. But let's say you're going for a three-year program. 
With that program, you probably get a three-year visa just to cover the time that you are expected to be studying here. Now, another thing to mention is that when you do come to the UK to study, you are expected to be studying, which then means that you can't take on a full-time job. You're expected to only do a maximum of 20 hours a week if you do need to work whilst you're here. You can work uh, for longer outside of term time. So during the holidays, you can work for longer than that. But during the term time, you have to work only 20 hours a week and you cannot be self-employed. You can't register as a self-employed individual in the UK if you're on a student visa. So just bear that in mind. However, I wanted to put a point here about dependents. So let's say you come to the UK as a postgraduate student and you wanted to bring in dependents. The dependents that do come with you don't necessarily have the same restrictions as you do in terms of work. If a person comes in as a dependent of a student, so maybe a spouse of the student at postgraduate level, for example, um, that spouse may not necessarily be subject to the same rules when it comes to working. So they may be allowed to work full time and um, potentially even run a business. Now to find out more about that, I'll put a link to the official government page about that, about bringing dependents in and what the eligibility requirements would be for them. If you wanted to bring dependents into the UK, you can only do so if your postgraduate course, for example, was nine months or longer. Any shorter, you may not be allowed to bring the dependent in. Now, the next thing I wanted to speak to you about is the graduate visa, the graduate visa. This was introduced by the UK government on the 1st of July, 2021. And basically what happens with that visa is that when you finish your degree in the UK, whether as an undergraduate or a postgraduate, you can convert to the graduate visa. Now that visa gives you at least two years if you're an undergraduate or master student and if you're a doctoral studies candidate you would have three years to basically look for work and just work and you can work in any category for those two years however if you do intend on settling what you can do is if you find a job that meets the eligibility criteria for settling and switching to the skilled worker visa you can make that switch but just bear in mind though the two years two or three years on the graduate visa does not count towards settlement just bear that in mind. But that is another option in terms of it elongating your stay in the UK beyond your studies. Again, as always, I'll put a link in the description or the video notes to the government website where you can find out more about this. I do have a few notes on eligibility I can share with you. I'm going to look on my screen and just read those out to you. So in order to be eligible for the graduate route, you need to be in the UK, physically in the UK at the point of application. Your current visa needs to be a student visa or a tier four visa. You need to have studied a UK bachelor's degree, a postgraduate degree, or other eligible course for a minimum period of time with your student visa or tier four visa. And your education provider, such as your university or college, needs to give you a confirmation that you've successfully completed your course. Bear those in mind. Another thing to bear in mind about this route is that if you have dependents and they're not already in the UK, you cannot bring them into the UK on the graduate visa route. They need to already have been in the UK. But if they're already in the UK, you can extend their stay with the graduate visa. And children who are born to the student uh, during their time on the student visa or tier four visa can also apply for their stay to be extended. If you're looking to come to the UK to study at postgraduate level, so at a master's or PhD level, the, the application process is a bit different to undergraduate. First of all, there isn't as much competition. Yay! So what that means is that you can apply to as many universities as you want to apply to, and you just have to wait to get your offers. Then you can get back to the individual universities to tell them whether you're going to take them on their offer or not. Similar to the undergraduate route, the university whose offer you then do accept can then send you a CAS letter. CAS, as I mentioned before, stands for the Confirmation of Acceptance of Studies. And with that letter, you can then apply for your UK visa in order to be able to come and study in the UK. But do bear in mind though, you may need to meet English language um, level requirements as well as academic requirements. So for example, scoring a particular uh, grade at your undergraduate studies, wherever you're studying from. I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so you know when next I release new videos. And then also I'd like it if you actually put a message in the comment section and tell me if this video 
uh, was useful to you, what you found useful, and if there are other topics along this line that you'd like me to cover, or if there are other topics in general you'd like me to cover in my videos. Alright, I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye!